All right, welcome to Pop Along RC. My name is Mark. Today we're going to be talking about batteries. I mean, look, there's loads to choose from. Goodness me. So the first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to right back to basics, is the humble Tamiya connector. So this connector has been around for a long time. It's the standard connector. It comes standard on most of the ready-to-runs and bits and pieces. This is an 1800 battery pack, nickel metal hydride to be precise. You will get that with most ready-to-runs uh, and that's ample. That'll, that'll do the job just fine. But as you work your way up, these connectors will become very, very hot. And in some cases they will melt. So if we look over here, we've got some 3000s here. You can go all the way up to 5000, 5, maybe a bit higher as well. But we tend to sort of stick at the 3000s. This is ample really for advantages. However, I say it's ample. If you look at these connectors here, which come supplied again with the car, um, they get really, really hot. They get so hot that they melt the plastic here. So what we tend to do is to bypass them completely, solder them together, jobs are good. So because this gets hot, I tend to change them over to a Dean's connector, which is what I'll show you right now. So the Dean's connector is a good step up from there, and that is on this battery pack here. All right. That works particularly well in the TTO on ease that we run because they're brushed. They don't draw a lot of current they're perfect. Right, so if we go a bit further up the range, here we've got an XT60 connector, and the 60 basically, that's how many amps can pass through it without it kind of getting too hot and melting. And then the next one up from that is an XT90, and we would use that typically on a 4S battery. This connector here, again, can handle a lot of current, and that's, that's on most of your armour vehicles. As we work our way up the range, we get to some pretty hefty batteries here. This one here is a 3S. And the, so this is a Traxxas connector here. They've got their own charging systems and bits and pieces. They're quite a nice one to go with as well. Can handle a lot more current. Not too sure how much on that one, but it's a lot. This battery here is a 1S. That means it's just one cell, all right? And on the top here, we have two holes for your bullet connectors, Corali bullet connectors, if you want to be precise. They can handle a fair bit of current as well. I actually, I actually use those on my aeroplanes. So we do a lot of racing as you're well aware if you're, if you're a regular to the channel but when you race these cars in the UK and I think it's safe to say in most countries you can't use a soft case LiPo. A soft case LiPo would be what it says on the tin. It's a soft case. You can literally squeeze that quite hard and it, well, I wouldn't want to do it but if you did you would probably squish it down. Any unlikely event that you crash you could damage the cell and obviously cause a fire. So you are not allowed, if you're affiliated with the BRCA, which most of us are if we run here in the UK, you can't use them. And actual fact, if they see you using them, they'll ask you very kindly not to use it or out the building you go. So we tend to use the hard case lipos. This one here is a 3S battery pack. I use this for my Armour Typhon. That's a really solid pack. I actually think this one's flown out of the car on a number of occasions and there's not a scratch on it. Well, there's probably a little scratch, but it's not broken. Works well. So the 3S refers to how many separate cells there are in there. So there are actually three cells in here. Now, obviously, when you get three cells in one pack or 4S batteries, where you get four cells in one pack, it comes with a balance lead. Now, the reason uh, that you do get a balance lead is sometimes they slip out of sync with one another. When you charge your batteries, you will more often than not connect it to a balance port on the charger and that will synchronize the cells and get them really nicely balanced and your car will be running sweet. That actually leads me on to the next thing actually. I think it's really important and on one of our other videos, I'll go into a bit more depth about this, but this is a battery checker. They're not very expensive, well worth getting if you're hitting a racetrack anytime soon. You can check your batteries. You can also balance them using one of these, which is quite good as well. And that will tell you the, the main voltage of it. It will tell you the voltage of each individual cell, which is really good. And it will give you a percentage, which is quite nice to look at at a glance. If you're quickly plugging it in before a race, you know you're good to go. So when you buy your car, if it's a ready to run, you will often it will often come with a basic charger, like a USB thing or something you plug in the mains, which are great, but they're not fantastic, which is why most people will invest in a better charger. I have this one, it's a Sky RC charger. Really, really reliable. It's got 12 volt input on it as well, which is good when you're out in the field. But what I did purchase with it 
it's one of these. And this, 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 this just enables you to charge multiple different batteries, not at the same time, because that would be a disaster, but multiple different batteries if you have lots of different batteries, like I do, with different connectors on. Very handy piece of kit, that. Now, a really important part of racing is one of these. This is called a LiPo safety sack. Now, again, if you're racing, mainly indoors, but outdoors as well, you will need one of these. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that informative short video. The reason we did it is because we do get asked questions about various bits and pieces. We don't always know the answers, but on this occasion, we're all right with batteries. We've got quite a few of them. So I thought we'd put this little video together just for you guys, just to tell you a few bits about the different connectors and the balancing bits and pieces and whatnot. And I hope you found it useful. If you can think of anything else you want to ask us, about motors, cars, radio systems, whatever, drop it in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Anyway, for now, I've got to tidy this lot up. So I'll see you soon. Take care.